Hi, I'm medicine hunter Chris Killam, coming to you from the very hot tropical Southeast Asian nation of Malaysia. This is one of my favorite countries to spend time in and to travel in. I'm at Biotropics Malaysia right now, a botanical manufacturer that is the only botanical manufacturer in Malaysia to be inspected by the United States Food and Drug Administration. Biotropics has a new ingredient that I think you're going to want to know about, and that ingredient is called casum, polygonum minus. Now this is a spice or a condiment that has been used in Malaysian and Southeast Asian cookery for a long period of time. It's used in a variety of different foods. It's also known as laksa. And kasum contains a very rich concentration of well-studied antioxidant compounds that not only possess very high antioxidant capacity, but also anti-inflammatory capacity as well. But our interest is something a little different from both of those, although they're very valuable. Kasum shows real benefit in human clinical studies for the enhancement of cognition. So different parameters of brain function. These days, nootropics, those brain enhancing ingredients, are increasingly popular. And I think that kasum deserves a good place at the table. I'm going to take you from field to finish, from where kasum is cultivated, to where it's used in cookery, to where it is processed here as a botanical ingredient ready for use as a nutraceutical. So come along with me on the medicine trail as we together investigate Kasum. So this is a plantation of Kasum. This is Polygonum Minus. This is a very, very popular spice used in Malaysian cookery and Vietnamese cookery and Thai cookery used all throughout Southeast Asia. This particular plantation is kind of distinguished by being right up against completely virgin rainforest. The forest in Malaysia is very dense. This is a fragrant, fragrant plant. And when I smell it, it reminds me of some soups that I've had in Vietnamese restaurants, uh, in pho restaurants, and also some dishes that I've had here in Malaysia. This is a very, very popular condiment. It's the leaves that are used. Very nice. An aromatic spice. So, the way you might use oregano or rosemary, both of which, as you know, are highly medicinal, highly beneficial. Um, it's also got a little bit of a sharpness to it, kind of a sharp top note. Now this plant from seed to harvest takes about 90 days. And here, uh, the people who grow kasum stage their plantings and their harvest. So about every 45 days, they're getting uh, a new harvest. This has about a week or so to go, five days maybe. Then this will be harvested and taken to market and chefs will use it. Some of it will go to uh, Biotropics Malaysia and they will have this dried and then ready for extraction. Um, this is all uh, nourished by water. It's kind of, it's like paddy, okay? It's just kind of like rice. It uh, grows very, very wet. Um, Kasum does not favor dry conditions, doesn't like uh, to be any place but in water. Uh, and this water does not come from some sort of a chlorinated pool or something. It comes from a fresh mountain stream that is actually originating from virgin forest here. The Malaysian forest is very dense, uh, tremendous amount of vegetation and biodiversity. So it's the pure water from the stream that is feeding this. Uh, this is hand planted, it's hand tended, of course it's hand harvested. Uh, the people who work with this carry these big sacks of kasum on their backs to get them to a place where they can dry it. And this is it. And this is the plant that also demonstrates very significant benefits for cognitive enhancement. So from culinary spice to brain sharpener, it's right here. This is kasum. So Dr. Receipt, 
Yes, sir. You were with the uh, Forestry Research Institute of Malaysia for quite a long time, right? Yes, about 30 years. 30 years. Yeah. I guess that qualifies as a long time. Yeah. And um, you're a plant geneticist by background? Yes, I'm a plant geneticist. I'm also uh, as a breeder for tree and herbs. A breeder for trees and herbs. Yeah. So what's your opinion of this particular uh, Kasum plantation. Does it look like it's well done to you? Oh, this is this is great. Yeah, and yeah. I, I reckon this is the one that should supposed to be done like this. So we got a little bit of uh, Kasum collection and sorting going on here, <laughs> along with some music to make the work easier. They're tying these into bundles. Here at the Ethnobotanical Garden at the Forestry Research Institute in Malaysia, researchers investigate plants that have been used by the aboriginal people of Malaysia, that is the Oring Osli, for medicinal purposes, and also plants that are used by the traditional Malaysian healers. So you have many varieties of plants here for all different types of purposes. The researchers here like to focus on plants that are endemic to Malaysia. As is the case in so many countries, there are plants here that have been brought in from India, from China, from Thailand, from other areas that are now also employed in uh, folk medicine and in research and in, for other purposes. But the focus here at the Botanical Garden really is on the endemic plants of Malaysia. And we see uh, here investigation into Persicaria minor, Kasum, for digestive purposes. Also drunk as uh, an infusion, as an overall tonic, and used topically for wound healing. So the researchers continually investigate the properties of these plants. And it happens to be that their research confirms many of the purposes that uh, people are focusing on right now for Kasum, especially when it comes to the antioxidant properties and the anti-inflammatory properties. So we learn a lot by being here with people who are investigating these plants on the ground and investigating their traditional use. Today finds us at uh, Taman Botanical Shah Alam, and I am here with Datin Sharifa Anissa, who is one of the top experts on Malaysian traditional medicine. And uh, I appreciate you being here today. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about Kasum, is that correct? Yeah, I understand that uh, you, you come all the way from your country to talk about Kasum. About 30 hours of travel to come here to talk about Kasum. Yes, and I Maybe I should have just Skyped, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to come quite, quite, quite far to, to be here to talk about Kasum too. Yes, okay. So, okay. So it's nice meeting you here. It's a great pleasure. It's a great pleasure. Um, I understand that uh, Kasum has been used traditionally by the Boring Osley for digestion and for treating skin and for so many different things. Yeah, in, in our country, Kasum is widely used by the nation. Yes. So you must understand Malaysia is full of, you know, we are not only Malays, we have Chinese, Indian, but uh, mostly the Malays and Indian, uh, you know, the Malays and Chinese use oh. Kasum. Okay. Uh, but uh, not much used by the Indian. The Indian use Kasum as medicine. All right. They seldom use it in their, in their food. Right. But the Malays they, and the Chinese, they use it in their food. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the, the Malays, believe that Kasum is also part of health and beauty. Uh -huh. 
uh -huh. human, you see? Yeah. So for 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 daily intake, for health and beauty, the Malays use it in their food, but at minimum amount. Okay. Okay, like uh, you know the wild kasum is better than the normal kasum. They have two types, I think. They have creeping pre um, kasum. Okay. And they have uh, kasum which is uh, planted by. Uh, and paddy. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But the wild one is they have a red, a red tinge on the leaf. Okay. And a okay. smaller, smaller leaf. Uh, that has got um, more medicinal values. So greater concentration yes, of the, yes, the beneficial yes. properties? Yes. Okay. Uh, so when okay. it is added in the food, the aroma, you know, they have a strong aroma. Mm -hmm. it, it helps especially um, um, seafood, and, uh, uh, seafood and fish, you know, it's maybe yes. fish. Yes. You see, maybe uh, then it brings a very good aroma. But then uh, we believe that by eating, uh, uh, daily by eating fish rather than meat, you know, yes. it helps more with health. Yes. And then with the soup inside there, uh, adding for the flavor, it helps the internal cleansing. Okay. So the Malays believe that the soap is very good for internal cleansing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it helps uh, for uh, for flatulence. Yeah. You know, to be yeah. wind. Yeah. And, uh, but they cannot put a lot. So we have to add in a minimum like three uh, branches to five branches in the food. So we are in the so-called wet market in Kota Baru, which is in Kelantan State, south of Kuala Lumpur. And uh, here, people sell fresh vegetables, meats, fish, spices, all kinds of prepared foods, uh, fermented durian, um, fish that's been preserved in bamboo, so many different things. And we've been watching people come and buy kasum. In fact, one woman who has a restaurant came and bought a huge bag of it just a few minutes ago. It's very, very popular here. This is a market that is run mostly by women. Sometimes their husbands help out, but it's the women who run this market, and this is one of the many places where you can find kasum. If you're coming to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, there's one and only one absolutely essential stop. No matter what you're doing or who you are, you must come to Restaurant Ribbon. And that is run by Chef Ishmael, who is not only a celebrated chef, but if I can say so, you're kind of a big personality. No, no, no. Yes, no. yes, 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 yes. You are very well known here. Now, when I first met you, you started to tell me about your background growing up in the country. The village. Yeah, tell me a little bit about that. Okay. Uh, okay, my name is I'm Ismail. I'm from Rambau Negri Sembilan, yeah, which is south of Kuala Lumpur. And it's about probably uh, 45 minute drive from the yeah. city. Yeah. Now it's almost suburb. You know, you cannot see a lot of villages. There used to be a lot of Greece, but now it's building it. But at that time, it was quite under Yeah, 1960s. Okay. Yeah, I was born in 1960s. So, I, 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 uh, my grandparents brought me up with organics. Mm -hmm. uh, things that grew around the garden, like pumpkin, bananas, cassava, uh, turmeric, uh, fresh coconut, and uh, river fishes, and you know, it's a very rare that we have meat, probably one, one month, twice or something, if they go to the wet market. Uh -huh. Yeah, but daily stuff that you have is, even the paddy we grow ourselves. Okay, so, so you're actually growing your own yeah, rice? Yes, yes, those days. Uh, okay. I'm so sorry for the up, new upbringing children today that you miss all these things. Unless sure. you are in a certain area, it's still undeveloped. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. So that's why today, Hardly that I get common flu or fever. Thank God, you know, right. yeah, because you I've been brought up in this uh, organic stuff. So, for you, the different ingredients from nature really are what make your food so special. Yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, in my uh, in my uh, menu that uh, well, this salad we call karabu is a must. 
is one of the side dishes but not appetizer in our Malayu or Malaysian term. I mean, in, in the Malayu. Malayu is Malay. I'm a Malay. So, salad like this is normally we produce if it, the weather are too hot outside, too sunny. So, you want something fresh and crunchy. So, this is the Grabu Sotong. Sotong it is calamari. Okay, first of all, okay, this kasu is my main ingredient. When the leaf, you shred it very fine. Okay. Here come the kaso, down kaso, so they're green and nice. See, okay. Yeah. Okay, so now we have the fit sisters of KL, and they, you obviously do look like maybe you've exercised a few times. <laughs> yeah. But, but I understand also from talking with you ahead of time that you are also the food appreciating sisters of yes. KL. Yes. 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 Very particular about healthy foods and healthy ingredients. So. You gonna serve them some of this amazing salad? Oh, I think they like it. And so then we get your opinion on how this stacks up against other other versions that you've had. All right. Okay. So this is the big taste test. Oh, I get more. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> like one mouthful is not enough. Uh, I was kind of hoping for more. Okay. Okay. Ready? Yeah. All right. Mm. Oh, this is my first time having this. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. So full of flavor. Yeah, really hot. This is really good. I mean, don't you want to just like move in? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs>
the things far better than those who could not know.